Chris Kelly at JustAnnettaStampAbove.com coming to you from Menasha, Wisconsin. Today for the Santa's Little Elves design team, we have a fabulous project to share with you. This is a great gift idea. Isn't it beautiful? We're using the Christmas quilt framelit set and also the large letters. And I've just put this in a nice black frame. So I really like to make a lot of my Christmas presents. And I tend to put these along with maybe a gift card or something that I think my loved ones will really like. This is just kind of a little extra that I put in there. I just love making gifts out of supplies that I already have. And when I take a look at this, all I had to buy was this frame. I already had all the supplies to make a Christmas present. So let's get started and I'll show you how absolutely easy this is to make. This bundle is very versatile in that way. It doesn't have to be about Christmas, and I love sets that I can use all year long, right? So I used this bundle, and I also used the large letter framelits. Oh my gosh, you guys, if you've seen the Eclipse technique that I've shown you in the past, I've made several cards with words, but this set of framelits is amazing, and it's something that you can have for the rest of your life. It's a big investment. These large letter framelits are $99. But I wanna tell you, if you have a party, you can get these for free or at least 50% off and not have to spend all that money. And you're like, well, Kelly, you're in Wisconsin and I'm in wherever. Hey, I host the best Facebook party ever. You invite your friends with a Facebook invitation we all meet up at a certain time on a certain day and I start sharing and sharing. I share videos on my Facebook Live parties. I share all kinds of projects. I answer questions. It is so much fun. So if you'd like to do a Facebook party, you contact me. Right here's my blog. My email address is kelly at estampabove.com. And I would be happy to set that up with you so you can get these for free or at least 50% off. Love that. I've got my joy letters here, and I am just going to run these through the Big Shot and die cut them. I'm also gonna be die cutting a flower that I'll show you in a minute. And this is my scrap because I die cut the letters on the silver foil and also in black, and you'll see what I do with that in just a second. So I've die cut my quilt background and then I also die cut several different pieces of the designer series paper with the same die. And here's what's left over. And I save these because I can make something else with this, right? We are savers, aren't we? Sometimes it's a problem, but um, I try to keep it under control. So I'm going to save these because I'm just going to use the pieces from the inside. So I wanted to show you how cool this is. I've already die cut this. And you have to be kind of gentle when you're pulling this off because it is intricate. There we go. And there's another, another one that I can now cut out and use for something. But I just popped all these pieces out. And you could do this with your die cut brush. That would be a better idea. But I happen to have both of mine loaded up for classes tonight. So... Then I also wanted to show you, you can either cut your layer like I did, this is three by three, or you can die cut all of it at the same time. So we've got a die cut that'll cut out the outside as well as the inside. And then I wanted to show you this flower. This flower, whoops, let me put this under here. I've already die cut it, but it can be die cut at the same time. It's actually two thinlets. And look at how pretty that is. Oh my gosh, I love it. I've also die cut a black flower to go behind my silver flower. Whoops. So not only do we have this, I almost forgot what I was doing here. Yeah, I know, that's shocking, right? I took all of these little petals and I glued them onto my flower. Whoops. There we go, so that's how I got the flower that I put on my frame, and I'll bring that out again in just a minute. So you can do that, or you can take this flower and you can put it right over the background flower. So I cut the black out with this, the silver foil out with this, and you can do this. And I think I like that, I'm gonna try that this time. So I'm gonna push these petals aside. 
I'm going to grab my adhesive. Oh, I got a brand new bottle here. That's exciting, right? You won't have to watch me shake it for ever to get it to come out. Oops, that's a little bit too much glue. We don't want that much. We don't want this squeezing out all over the place. I'm just going to put glue right in the middle so I don't have to worry about seeing glue squish out from under my flower. And that'll hold it just fine. Isn't that pretty? Whoops, I lied. <laughs> okay, let's see if that'll hold it just fine. Give it a second, right? Okay, very cool. Then I'm bringing in our clear faceted gems because I thought this would be the perfect embellishment for the middle of my flower. And here's a little tip. Did you see the red one here? You can color them with your stamp and write or stamp and blend markers. And you can make these any color you want. They're absolutely beautiful. This one isn't even colored in very good. But there we go. That's cool. And then I'm going to set that aside now. I'm going to bring something in here so I don't get glue on my tabletop surface. So I cut out all these little pieces. Remember I said that I took the designer series paper? All the different designer series paper that I've used to cut out this same image. Got a whole bunch of them here. And I popped the pieces out from inside of the design. Gosh, I'm having a hard time talking. And I've sorted them out so it'd be easier for me to put these together. I'm going to, first you wanna mount your foil layer to your black layer. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue around here. Again, you don't have to get too crazy with this. It's not gonna fall apart. Maybe a little bit right in the middle. We're going to add this layer, just like this. Oops, I got a little bit of glue squishing out. That's what you want to try to avoid. So don't use too much glue. It just makes a big mess. Okay, and now I'm just going to start gluing my elements in place. And rather than try to hold onto these and put glue on them, just put the glue right in the little blank spot where you need it to be. And it's just like putting a puzzle together, which I find to be, I don't know, kind of therapeutic. I think that a lot of our stamping is therapeutic, don't you? I know that I always seem to be more relaxed and I just feel good about myself when I get to create something or even just make a bunch of the same thing because it's therapeutic. You get to decide what you want in each spot. So I'm gonna put this one here. And, whoops, whoops, that one's not gonna fit. I'm gonna find a different one. We're gonna grab some of these black ones. So I'm gonna fill up all these holes and I'll be right back. Okay, there we go. We've got that all done. I am going to bring in another one of the faceted gems, and I think I'm going to use the biggest one here. Put that right in the middle. I'm going to save all these little pieces so that if I want to make more, remember we're saving again. Ugh. Okay, here's our pieces. Now, I am going to take and put this right in the center of the top of my base layer and I'm going to put that on dimensionals and because this is home decor and not just a card I'm going to add quite a few dimensionals I want to make sure this is nice and sturdy and it holds up well And dimensionals are pretty inexpensive, right? I think you get 300 of them in a pack. My lord. All right, here we go. Boom! Yay! For my joy. This is kind of fun. I am going to offset all of these letters, the silver letters, on the black. And that's just going to make my letters really pop. 
So I want the black to stick out to the left side. So I'm just going to put glue on the right side of each of these letters and let them offset just like this. Oops, just a little bit. You don't want too much. Isn't that neat? It just really, it creates that shadow, makes them very pretty. And again, left side, or I'm putting glue on the right side because the left side is gonna be sticking out. This over just like that and again the glue is really nice because you can move these around a little bit if you don't get them perfect the first time you set them down so that's pretty cool and don't forget to put a little bit of glue on this part here too oops what's going on here my Y doesn't fit I bet you it's oops <laughs> I put glue on the wrong side you guys Whew. Glad I pulled that off. There's still glue on the back of the gold. So I'll just stick that right on there like that. Make sure you don't get glue on your fingers and stick it on the front of your, um, I said gold before, but I meant silver, because it'll leave marks and you don't want that. So I'm gonna clean my fingers off so I don't have any problems with that, because <laughs> you know you guys, you guys know how messy I am. Okay, our letters are ready. Oops, this one's got glue on the back, remember? And now we're ready for assembly. Come in here, and I'm gonna keep my joy up close to my quilted paper. Here comes our flower. Oh my Lord, how pretty is that? I'm just using multi-purpose glue to glue these down. You want to keep these letters tight together. There's not a lot of room in a 5 by 7 frame. If you wanted to, you could turn the frame so that it is vertical instead of horizontal and put Noel or Snow. That would be cool too. And then I'm going to raise this up on a dimensional also. Gosh, and I have another Christmas present. So here's another black frame that I have. And I'm gonna just open this up. And I do take the glass out of it. And I'm gonna put it right in here. I would also maybe put a layer of um, the cardboard backing that comes in your designer series paper. I would make put that in there too if you needed some filler. Look at that, isn't that pretty? So here's two different backgrounds, two different flowers. Love, love, love this idea. I hope you guys enjoyed this. You know, if you find a card that you like, you can turn any card into a home decor item and give it as a gift. And you know, a lot of times I hear from my customers, oh, my family doesn't like that. You know what, you're full of it. I'm calling you right now because yes, your family does love that. And you just don't have enough confidence in yourself to give a gift that you've made. Get some confidence. Know that what you're making is beautiful, it's worthwhile, and it will be cherished. Make some Christmas presents, make some birthday presents, Valentine's Day, oh my gosh, so much fun and easy. And I love to display stuff during you know the different seasons, holidays, whatever. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. I'd love to see what you're making if you decide to make some of these. And if you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I would love to earn your business. You can pop me an email at kelly at stampabove.com. Make sure you check out my blog, www.astampabove.com. I've got lots of great ideas on there. I will have a list of all the ingredients and dimensions on my blog for you. So you can click underneath the video on YouTube, it'll say see more. And when you click see more, you're gonna find a link in there right to my blog. You'll also find links down below that when you click on them, it'll take you to my Stampin' Up! store where you can purchase any of the products that I have used in this project. And believe me, I appreciate all your orders. I am overwhelmed and I feel truly blessed. And before I forget, I have really exciting news, you guys. 
So we were in um, Salt Lake City last week for the Stampin' Up! On Stage Conference and we had an absolutely wonderful time but it's also the time of year when Stampin' Up! gives out their annual awards and are you ready for this? Out of approximately 50,000 demonstrators worldwide, I ranked number 56 in the world. Boom! Oh my gosh, so excited. I am humbled to be among so many talented people. And I don't know how somebody like me, Kelly Atchison from little old Menasha, Wisconsin, gets to partake in all of this, but I am truly grateful and I'm grateful to all of you and I'm grateful for your support and your comments and your orders that keep me in business and keep these free videos coming to you. So thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. I wish you guys a wonderful weekend. Wherever you are, it's opening gun hunting season in Wisconsin and I'll be headed up north tomorrow morning to go try my hand at some deer hunting. I do that every year. Please don't send me any hate messages. Just let it go. Just let it go. Um, it's something that I really enjoy and it's something my family does and a family who hunts together stays together. <laughs> I love saying that. So I hope um, anybody who's also doing the same thing this weekend, I wish you a safe hunting season. Please be careful. Remember, always know what's beyond what you're shooting at. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.